Want to advertise your business in a cost-effective way? It's time to give podcast advertising a try. Research shows a high rate of podcast listeners made a purchase as a result of an ad they heard on a podcast. Visit podbean.com slash brands to launch a cost-effective podcast advertising campaign in minutes. That's P-O-D-B-E-A-N dot com slash brands. Welcome to the latest episode of Five on the Floor on the Five Reasons Sports Network. Thanks for joining us on your favorite podcast app. We're on Podbean, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. We're also on Dash Radio on their Nothing But Net channel. That's every single weeknight at 7 p.m. Also, check out the Five Reasons YouTube channel before floor, an hour before every game. Post up five hours as soon as the game ends. And FiveReasonsSports.com. That is our free, no paywall site. The latest takeaways from Brady Hawk and many other Heat articles by Matteo Mayorga, Marco Romo, and others. And check out the great sponsors of the Five Reasons Sports Network. We're going to start with this one because we're doing something new. We're having our first Heat happy hour before the game, before a home game. We typically do watch parties for road games. We're going to be at City Cigar Lounge. That's City Cigar Lounge down the street from FTX Arena starting at about 4 o'clock. They got more than 350 different types of liquor, more than 50 different types of cigars. They got clean, comfortable environment, great leather chairs, TVs, the whole deal, and a food menu. Okay, so you can eat there too. So come pre-party with us over at City Cigar Lounge. That's Wednesday night before the game against the Knicks. I'll be out there from about 4 to 6.30. Come join us and some of the rest of the crew from five reason sports get off work early come say hello to us all right city cigar lounge in downtown miami and now tonight's episode down to this day yay uh five on the floor drive for my dogs where here's the thing you can check the score hustle hard couple scars wearing bubble frogs just like what they say you in trouble y'all kept the floor playing got a all band y'all seen the block stop the one hand and pat we trust it's power have the guts we're here to bring the heat y'all can hang it up Welcome to Five on the Floor, a daily insider show on the Miami Heat and the NBA featuring Ethan Skolnick, Greg Sylvander, and Alex Toledo, plus others from the Five Reasons Sports Network. All right, Ethan Skolnick back on Five on the Floor. Here's tonight's floor plan. I'm here at FTX Arena about two hours after the game, along with Alex Toledo. You can follow him at Tropical Blanket. The Miami Heat beat the Los Angeles Lakers today 113 to 107. They survive a furious rally by the Lakers in the fourth quarter where the Lakers score 37 points, but it doesn't overcome what was the Heat's 39-point first quarter and 69-point first half. The story tonight, a couple of stories. One, Alex is signaling to me now. The Miami Heat are now the number one seed in the Eastern Conference. After everything, no Lowry, no Hero tonight, no Bam, no Butler for portions of the season, no P.J. Tucker for some games, no more Keith Morris. They are now the number one seed in the Eastern Conference. Also, Jimmy Butler tonight with 20, 10, and 12 plus two steals. He passes LeBron James for the most triple doubles in Miami Heat history. He now has 10. LeBron had nine. Jimmy does it in about two and a half seasons, roughly. LeBron took four seasons to do that, just to put this into some perspective. And of course, this is also a franchise that Dwayne Wade played for. The other story tonight, Duncan Robinson with 25 points, easily his best home game of the season, a critical three at the end, eight of 13 overall, six of 11 from three, five rebounds, three assists, and a couple of steals tonight also. So we're going to get into Duncan later in the episode. I want to mention here early, Caleb Martin also had a couple of big plays and he scored 15 off the bench uh, and he had a steal and a dunk at the end that kind of clinched it. But I want to start here with Jimmy and LeBron. And we, we got the chance to talk to LeBron after the game, uh, Alex. And I got a chance to ask uh, LeBron about his respect for Jimmy. And LeBron wanted to talk a lot about Spo tonight. We both felt that was targeted. If you've spent any time around LeBron, he tends to mention the greatness of other coaches when he's frustrated with his own coach. He used to do this uh, when he wasn't happy with Spo. I was in Cleveland when he wasn't happy with David Blatt. He talked about Spo a little bit. Uh, and then, you know, he, he will talk about he will talk about the coach who's not with him. But it did seem sincere when he talked about Spo. He talked about how well coached the Heat are. He talked about how they make you pay. You can't be lackadaisical against them. Um, but also then when we got him to pivot to Jimmy a little bit. He said this because he went up and he hugged Jimmy and bam, we know he knows you, D. Uh, PJ Tucker, he's had a long competitive relationship with Victor Oladipo. He, he hugged as well. But with Jimmy in particular, there seems to be something more here after the finals two years ago. 
And he said he's just one of those guys that they're competitors that that, you know, you're going to get it from him every night. And I think what we saw from Jimmy the past couple of nights, particularly after, you know, the frustration of the down the stretch plays that were not made against Atlanta, but then the plays that were made today to set the tone is that Jimmy is at the peak of his powers, as Greg says. He is great at a lot of different things. Some of the things that LeBron is great at. And it was Spo who unlocked that stuff. It was Spo who sat down with us at that first media day and said, I see him as a playmaker. I don't think other coaches, I don't think Thibodeau or Hoiberg or the other coaches that that Butler had saw him that way. Um, And he has fulfilled all of that. But there are also certain things that Jimmy doesn't do as well down the stretch as maybe a LeBron does. We saw Jimmy get trapped a couple of times and find himself in trouble. And so I think what we saw over the past couple of games was this is how great Jimmy can be. I think Jimmy can be the best player on on a championship team as long as he's got a couple of really good players with him. I don't just necessarily think he can be the best scorer down the stretch of games. And, and I, so I, and I think the Atlanta game and now the Laker game crystallized and it also crystallized why they need Tyler Hero back and to a certain degree, Kyle Lowry to take that burden off him late in games. I agree with you. And I feel like this has been kind of like the subject of heat Twitter for the past few games. We've kind of shifted off giving Duncan heat and complaining about Omer Yurtsevin not being in the starting lineup or whatever. And now we've shifted to Jimmy Butler. And I get it because he's been struggling the past few games, especially without Kyle and Tyler out there, just taking that pressure off of him to, to having to, really create for everybody and for himself at all times. Like we know what Bam can do in that aspect, but when they're missing guys like Kyle and Tyler, really, there's going to be one person actually dribbling the ball out there, right? It's going to be Jimmy. You're going to see a little bit of game dribbling and a little bit of everybody, right? They move the ball around really well. But I just think like when, when you're missing the type of guys that they're missing right now, and then we saw it last season too, with Goran not being at the same level he was before, he, he needs a little bit of help there. Like he, Jimmy is a guy who, like you said, when put in this playmaker role, he looks really good, but he looks even better when you're putting a lot of really good players next to him. And obviously you can say that about any player, right? Players are going to play better when they're surrounded by very good players. But to me, the Jimmy thing is like, even though tonight he, he didn't have a great scoring game, went seven of 18, he played his game. He was in control for most of the game. Obviously they gave up that run in the fourth quarter, but Jimmy was in control for all of that game, making the right passes, getting into the paint and making stuff happen. I mean, he took a few jumpers tonight, which I thought was I think he ended up with like five or six jumpers in total tonight, because I feel like the Lakers are really giving him a lot of space the same way that that he were treating Russ. But overall, to me, Jimmy had a really strong game and it is kind of like a mini LeBron thing going on. I feel like they have like such a similar play style, except Jimmy does it at six, 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 seven or whatever he is. And LeBron went 12 of 22. You got nine of 15 from Russ. Like if you're a Lakers fan, you're like, oh, that's the type of box score you get in a W. We don't ever get 9 to 15 from Russ. And you still come out with a win tonight. You know, we know the context of the game and how it went, how the Heat uh, were pretty much on top for the entire game until the fourth quarter. And all of that really was in the hands of Jimmy controlling the game. Yeah, and it, I was a little surprised to see a couple things in the Jimmy box score. Just one turnover. It felt like he got pressed a little bit more than that, so he didn't end up turning it over. He was a minus six. He was the only negative player on the court for the Heat tonight, which sometimes shows you what single game uh, plus minus can mean. But he has become, in a sense, uh, LeBron light for the Heat. But it's not that light. Like It's not, not like you're talking about like a dime store version of LeBron. He's like 85% at a lot of the different things. And I think this is what they envision for him. He, he's not the kind of guy who's going to feel physically take over games the way that LeBron still at his level. LeBron said tonight after the game uh, that that he feels he's he's in as good a scoring rhythm as he's ever been in. Um, now, I don't know if it's quite the same efficiency, but he's also and, and I was talking to Joe Varden tonight who covered LeBron with me in Cleveland and has covered him a lot since. And he was saying this is the worst team LeBron's ever put together because it's really the first time he's ever put a team together and he has put a team together that is totally contrary to his skill set, to what works best about LeBron. I tweeted this a little while ago and I ran it by somebody with the Heat and they didn't necessarily disagree with me. The the Miami Heat currently are the perfect team for LeBron James. If LeBron James subbed in for Jimmy Butler right now, he would have a team he could absolutely win a championship with. He cannot win a championship with a team he has uh, in L.A. But this team in Miami, what you need with LeBron James is an athletic, unselfish, versatile, defensive big. Bam. You need... Clutch role players, PJ. 
you need some three level scoring to take the burden off. Uh, uh, Tyler, you need a guy like Kyle Lowry who can play on and off the ball. OK, which is not something Russ can do because he can't play off the ball. Kyle Lowry is a much better fit with LeBron James. He's much closer to the Mario. He's like a much better version of Mario Chalmers. Sorry, Brio. Uh, you know that that LeBron has played with uh, typically. And then you need like role guys who are going to play defense defend the perimeter, defend the point of attack. So LeBron doesn't have to do it like shooters. shooters. And then I didn't even mention that shooters. You need shooters. And you had tonight, Duncan Robinson. You don't think for as much as he fans complain about Duncan Robinson, that LeBron James would trade four of the players on his team right now to have a Duncan Robinson out there on the wing. Okay. Running around screens. So, I mean, literally the Miami heat have built the ideal team for LeBron James. It just happens to also be the ideal team for Jimmy Butler. The question then becomes, can Jimmy elevate, okay, the way he did in the finals two years ago? And, and I think we're going to touch on this now, can Tyler Hero play the role that Goran Dragic played for them two years ago? And I, you and I and Greg were going back on this a lot, uh, and I think there's some agreement on this. That's really what Goran provided two seasons ago, that he didn't provide last year, that Goran provided those relief points. Goran was able to get into the crevices of the defense. That is something that Tyler has done. And I think we have seen over the past couple of games in the last four minutes, they need Tyler hero offensively. I, Kyle, they need Kyle too, but it's harder for me to quantify it with Kyle. Um, with Tyler, we've seen it down the stretch for the heat. And I think that makes it uh, a little bit different. I just want to close the loop here. And then we're going to talk more about Duncan and others. Uh, but again, when you look back at what the heat we're looking for when Jimmy Butler decided to come here. He started this whole thing. You know, they 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 had Josh Richardson and Hassan Whiteside as their cornerstone pieces. Jimmy coming here changed this franchise back to a championship level franchise that they were at when LeBron was here with Dwayne and Chris. And, and I don't think, we, you know, for all the criticisms of Jimmy of what he doesn't do at the end of the games, I don't think we can forget that without Jimmy Butler, none of the rest of this stuff is happening. And he does it in a different way than LeBron where, you know, Jimmy's not submarining his coach, <laughs> which, which it's funny because, I, you know, people had that other image uh, of Jimmy uh, before we pivot to Duncan. And, and we're going to do that here after the break. Was there anything else tonight that jumped out to you late in the game? Like what they were missing? Because th there was a collapse and we have to acknowledge it. They, they were way ahead in this game and then there was they, they stalled. So to me, like I was actually just looking at some stuff before we started this game. And when you look at it, it just kind of comes down to the simple fact that they got off to that huge lead that he did with that first quarter where they outscored the Lakers 39 to 25. Now, the second and third quarters were actually played pretty evenly when you look at the, the, the scores there. But then you get to the fourth quarter and it's almost identical to what happened in the first, except flip flop. The Lakers outscored the Heat 37 24. So near identical numbers there. And that's uh, that's an obvious thing to point out. But it's just to say that. In that fourth quarter, the defense just completely fell off a cliff. I feel like they were they were at that point where they were kind of cruising already. They had felt that they were going to the W. And I'm obviously just speaking off of what I saw. But I, I really feel like that execution, just, you know, being in the right spots, all the things that they were doing in, in order to maintain that lead kind of went out the door. All, all that the habits and things that that coach talks about after the game, like it feels like they were executing perfectly for two or three quarters, even though, like I said, the second and third were more even, but they never really lost control at any point until this fourth quarter where all of a sudden Russ is getting into the paint at will. He's making shots like LeBron is controlling. And we've seen him before. That's why I'm like, I was starting to feel a little bit like, uh oh, LeBron is like a madman trying to get into the paint, going in there like a freight train, whether it's off cuts or off him doing it with the ball in his hands and the Heat were kind of letting up on defense. So I think this is more of a, of a complacency thing. But really, like the heat letting up on defense is not something I have a concern about going forward whatsoever. Yeah, I don't think that'll happen consistently. I look the LeBron thing. You know, we mocked him for for flexing down 20. But one of the reasons LeBron can get away with that is he can close a 20 point lead. <laughs> and so or a 20 point deficit. And he did that. Look, this is a bad Laker team, particularly without Anthony Davis. Uh, it's really poorly constructed. But Miami did let up defensively at the end of the games. And there were certain things. I thought Duncan played pretty good defense tonight, but there are certain things you were giving up when you were playing him down the stretch. Uh, I thought the Caleb substitution was absolutely critical. And then uh, the other thing to mention here is Gabe, you know, getting, I mean, 
playing up again, you know, playing against bigger guys. I mean, he was taking on LeBron challenge. He's qu- challenging Carmelo Anthony. Again, this is a guy. He's a G League player who is challenging Hall of Famers. And it's what we keep talking about. They have alpha role players and, and they had three of them playing late. Um, and they had some interesting lineups in this game. The, the Butler out of bio Robinson Struess Martin lineup is a lineup that I would like to see again. I, I feel like you get some shooting and you get some athleticism in there. Uh, and Eric, you know, experiment with it, a bunch of things. So we wanted to start with Jimmy today. We're going to talk about Duncan next because I think we do need to give him the appropriate time. Also want to tell you about some sponsors of the five reasons sports network. These are all the same code. OK, so we're going to pair all these together. The number is five. The number five. RSN for Reason Sports Network, 5RSN. And that's where you can get your premium CBD at therapistpreferred.com. Uh, use the code 5RSN for 25% off. That's therapistpreferred.com. That's in any form that you get the CBD, uh, whether it's the gummies, the tincture, the sports cream for recovery, for sleep, uh, therapistpreferred.com. GetSelise.com. This is for endurance athletes. 10% off there. GetSelise.com. This is to replace your electrolytes in a natural way. Get Salise, G-E-T-S-A-L-I-S dot com. Again, 5RSN. And for all of your, uh, excuse me, all of your uh, grooming products, including the cologne, the razors, or anything else, go to manscaped.com. You get 20% off. That's manscaped.com, 20% off. Again, all of these, the code 5RSN. 41 minutes or 42 minutes, 25 points, five rebounds, three assists, two steals, Eight of 13 from the field, six of 11 from three. This comes after Duncan Robinson made four threes to almost single handedly lead the heat back in Atlanta. Now, the road game thing in what was kind of a non pressurized situation because the heat were down in the game already is one thing. It's a good step. This today seemed different. He was hunting shots at home from the beginning of the game. He missed a late free throw. But other than that, I mean, he seemed to make all of the right plays. And I'm going to point to one stat above all 42 minutes tonight. We've discussed the fact that Eric Spolster has been getting away from him, right? Playing Struess more, playing other guys more. Now, no Lowry, uh, no hero, still no Oladipo. That plays into this 42 minutes tonight. He played more minutes than Jimmy. He played 10 more minutes than Bam. Uh, so, I mean, has the tide turned? I guess. I mean, do you trust it? Because again, their equation changes if they're getting this Duncan, particularly here with all these home games coming up. Oh, no doubt. I mean, I think this is why they've been so not worried about Duncan is because when you get these games, it's like, oh, yeah, that's why we have him around again. And it's not that you expect him to, you know, give you eight shots or whatever, eight field goals made every time. But when he's out there looking like he is in the first quarter and just really feeling himself, it's it's hard to it's hard to go away from. And I think that's kind of been a part of why Spo has latched on over the past couple of seasons. So all the Duncan Robinson dribble handoff stuff and why obviously they're using it less this season, but why they still use it so much is like you go against a team that like the Lakers tonight that started Dwight Howard and has Russell Westbrook out there and so, so many bad defenders. And you got to just know Duncan Robinson sees food, specifically when he sees the slow drop big. I think every single time he plays against a slow drop big is when he has these big games. It's like you have a guy like Dwight or DeAndre. Obviously, DeAndre didn't play tonight, but just as an example, he's coming off the screen. And if he has an inch of space, he's going to shoot it. He knows that there's not going to be the second guy coming on. And then when the Lakers finally adjusted and we're playing their small lineups and we're switching around a lot, he started making that pass to Bam in the short roll. So it's really the same things that we've been seeing for the past couple of seasons with Duncan. It's, if, it's a, if it's a dropping big, he's going to come off the screen and look to shoot. If it's a switching defense that's swarming him, he's going to make that pass to Bam. And so I, we all know that's coming, but then we all know that it's like, well, how many threes did he make? At the end of the day, I haven't said it in a while, He's make he's creating so many open looks for guys. And when he, he when he hits these three or four or more threes, it's like, OK, yeah, he's really showing his value. You know, tonight he had the layups, he had the steals, he had the assists, he did a little bit of everything. And I think that also is kind of like a byproduct of him feeling himself and coming out of that rut. It's like, OK, I, he's contributing in all these different ways. And I feel like that's the green flag. That's the indicator that Duncan is back. I've never seen a Heat player whose success was so tied to the success of the uh, of another or the presence of another. 
he needs Bam. I mean, it's just it's just obvious. And, and we we signaled this by saying that when Bam was back, Duncan would likely be put back in the starting lineup. It's exactly what Spolster did. And there's just that comfort level between the two of them that that just does not exist with Duncan and anybody else in the roster. We've talked about how it took a little time with Kyle. There are some edgy moments with Jimmy. Uh, but with Bam, it is just natural. I mean, it's just very simple for the two of them. Can I add something? So uh, Bam at the end of his uh, press conference, I forgot why. I think it was he was walking out. Somebody asked him what his sign was. And he has said he, he's a cancer. He's a uh, gentle, loving man. And Duncan was walking in. The first question he got was, Duncan, is Bam a gentle, loving man? And he said, yeah, he's been on the receiving end of Bam's love many times over the past couple of seasons. Good. My daughter is a cancer, too. So I <laughs> she'll be gentle and loving too to her father. Uh, yeah, it's um, it's remarkable. The two of them. I, I, I just think that, you know, they have this natural chemistry, this this kind of, and, and it's and you can just see it's built in and and it's, it's not forced. And there's certain players, you know, that just play well together. LeBron, as we sort of cycle back to tie back of this episode, there were certain guys LeBron played with here in Miami. There was a natural chemistry with Ray Allen came in and it was immediate. Like they, they just they were on the same wavelength. They viewed the game the same way. They looked for each other. Uh, there were others here with LeBron with Dwayne. There were certain players that there was that comfort level, obviously number 40, primarily among them, that there's just this natural kinship between them. Duncan has that with Bam. Um, and so I, I, I don't know that this is permanent. He could come out and shoot one for nine in the next one, but I don't think he's going to shoot one for four. I, I think what this does is it gives him the confidence to keep shooting. Um, and, and so now you work hero back in likely on Wednesday. If he passes the protocols, he should be back against the Knicks. We don't really know a lot about Kyle. And I've said before, even if we knew a lot, we're not necessarily sure that we would talk about it because it's a personal situation. Um, but at least if they get hero back, it's another guy back into the mix. And as we sit right here, Jimmy Butler, Duncan Robinson, Bam Adebayo, PJ Tucker, who was great. We didn't talk about him tonight. He was great again. He just uh, eight, eight point seven rebounds, five assists, running offense through him with Bam out. They're in first place in the Eastern Conference with everything that has happened this season. Nobody's going to talk about them tomorrow. Check out our other sponsor, prizepix.com. Use the code 5 F I V E. We mention all of our product sponsors, get salise.com, therapistpreferred.com, manscaped.com. That's 5RSN. And of course, come out and check us out at City Cigar Lounge on Wednesday, starting at 4 o'clock. Have a good night. Thank you for listening to the Five on the Floor on the Five Regional Sports Network.